Hello everyone and welcome to the Lobster Roll Tournament. First week of this is going to be a bit of, it's, sorry, it's been a bit of a mess getting this all set up. Unfortunately, the game's already started, so first game is going to be Dregs and Dan Warrior. And let's just get right to it. So, we have, we have Dregs and we have Dan Warrior. As you do, Dregs coming in with the Rover Factory, Dan Warrior also with Rovers, and we are on Fallendale, a map which I didn't actually really expect to see Rovers on. So Lobster Roll is a tournament series that starts today. It's a weekly series. I believe there's going to be like some kind of league or points or something around it. It's it's organized by Crow, previously known as Parzival, who seems to have actually who seems to uh, I mean, they they were here for a while. They became a bit of a meme, then they left, and now they're back. So actually, hosting a tournament series, and it's. Yeah, so basically it's a double elimination tournament, or a series of double elimination tournaments, and that will turn into a, I believe, a big final bracket with the people who are doing well, but honestly it's probably going to be the same people over and over, but I'm guessing there's going to be points and that'll lead to seeding for like a final bracket. I'm not 100% sure of the exact format, and I wouldn't be surprised if it got adjusted a bit because it has been an experimental format. We haven't really had a tournament series like this in 0k before. Anyhow, Drex is setting up quite the quite the pressure offense. I mean, Dan Warrior is doing a reasonable job of dealing with it, getting rid of mainly fences where they can. And List is defending against where they can, and now, same time, though, Drex, despite the defenses coming in from the Scorchers, they they don't really care. Going around the side, getting rid of the Masons, getting rid of the Metal Extractors. They get, I mean, Dan Warrior won't be able to escape with that Mason. And losing that Mason, that's the south side of the map. They're just completely cut off to Dan Warrior for some time. At the same time, though, Dan Warrior can't significantly deal damage over to the north. And that's where Dregs has been really setting up their economy. They got a reasonable setup to the south, but they got a major firebase to the north. Dregs already three minutes in with a 10 metal per second advantage as a result of basically killing that Mason. And Dan Warrior is going to be trying their best to push back. They've at least managed to defend against Dregs further. There's nothing coming in right now that's going to be causing too many issues. But even with that, they're still way behind. Dan Warrior, they're even on attrition, but they're way behind a metal, on metal extracted and, or metal income. And unfortunately, their units are getting out of position from each other. Dregs completely taking advantage of this. Dan Warrior, do you even have radar? Yes, they do but not covering the area their units are going to. Hence, 300, 400 extra metal being taken by dregs worth of units. Same time though, Dan Warrior scouting out a fair bit with some Scorchers. Not the worst idea, but at this point they've got to be super careful. They're depending entirely on the units they have here to actually defend. Ripper able to come in here. Taking out one fencer. Not quite able to take out both, but still Dan Warrior Managing to assert dominance over this bit of terrain. So if nothing else, they are going to be able to get up to 30-ish something metal per second. Unfortunately, that may not last long. Their, their Ripper is over, getting torn apart by Fencers when Scorchers over to the south are where it needs to be. There is one Ripper here, but one Ripper versus four Scorchers. Two of the Scorchers will die at most. Assuming Dregs engages. Dregs looking to see that discretion is the better part of Valor. Just sneaking around that Ripper again. Dan Warrior does have... Doesn't really have radar of that section. They do have radar of now. They can see that the Scorchers have managed to elude their defenses. But, at the very least, the Scorchers weren't able to kill the Mason. That's the important thing. Like, it doesn't matter so much if anything else does. The Mason can still rebuild, build up the metal extractors, set up defenses, all that stuff. As long as it's alive. Though I'm not sure how long that'll even be. Dregs over to the north... Fencers are starting to rip apart what has been built up there, and more importantly, just managing to start to s just smash into Dan Warrior's base as if there's nothing that'll ever stop them. And really, two or three rippers aren't going to, not against this many fencers. The Scorchers are evading the rippers. Fencers smartly positioning themselves to deal with them. Scorchers able to get rid of both caretakers. That is probably going to be it. Dan Warrior is going to be stuck accessing for a while. 
They do have two masons. It's at least something. They can still get 20 metal per second in on the factory, but... Dan Warrior now accessing as they finally gotten their economy to a reasonably okay position, but not even on par. Dregs, they expanded to the south as well, and it's worth noting, Dregs has more than enough production capacity. I mean, thanks to this one mason, but still, they have more than enough production capacity for what they're building, for what they're extracting. Dan Warrior is managing barely to stay in, thanks to their commander upgrades. That's the only thing keeping them in, but they, at this point, the commander upgrade may be all that saves them, if anything. More rippers coming in. Oh no, never mind. Ravagers! Much better choice. Okay, that actually can do the trick. I mean, one Ravager is a little bit hard to work with, but it made cost. Killed two rippers at 250 metal. Let's actually that I mean, Ravager is the right call here. I absolutely agree with that. Unfortunately, Rav I should say Ravagers are the right call. Ravager is just a slower suicide. Unfortunately, a single Ravager is not gonna be able to do all that much damage. Even if they are acting cost effectively, and that is it! Dan Warrior throws in the towel, and that is game. So I will point out that this is best of one. Uh, the the series, the stuff in between is best of one. So Dregs has taken it. Dan Warrior throws in the towel, Dregs takes the whole thing, and we'll be moving on as Dan Warrior goes off to the to the lower brackets, the loser's brackets. Sorry, I'm just double-checking. Best of one, yes. All matches are best of one. So, yeah. With that, we will have Dregs. Same time that we do have... It looks like Randy and Loa are going to be going at it. And while I don't... I, I kind of sympathize with Loa right now. I might as well see what's up with that. So, let's go... Oops. Let's go check that out. Let's see. Oh, maybe not? I don't see... What's the... Okay, well, we might not... All right, well, we're still waiting on blow. Anyway, I'm just going to put go throw to a break because... Actually, no, we should have Ted McFred and Dregs in a second. It's another option. I'm not really sure. I mean, Ted, Ted McFred has been waiting for some time. Okay, seriously, why isn't this... Alright, we're gonna do Dregs and Ted McFred. As that has become the thing that should be done. Wait, that's why isn't this? But yeah, anyway, we'll accept, throw to a break and then come back. Oh shit, no, not again. Oh good, okay. Welcome back, everyone. Bit of a short break there. We are back. We're going to have a match between Randy and Bloa. Dregs is actually watching the match here, so I figure, okay, fine, we'll just watch this one. See how the players are waiting. So, we have Megan and Sonia. To show you what we have. We have Megan and Sonia. It is going to be probably Amph Bot City. Or maybe Spiders. Oh, Randy, go for Spiders. Loa, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, going for cloak bots. Okay, that 
Yeah, the the factory choice and placement. I'm like I said, I kind of feel sorry for Blower right now. But so it goes. So yeah, Randy and Blower are going to be. Well, they're gonna be duking at it or duking it out, and Randy, I expect, will be coming in quite strong. Though maybe they're just gonna go for pure economy. Mechan and Sunny is not a map where you can really rush easily. I mean, you you. You can rush in, in a way that's going to be overwhelming, but it's, that's a really risky strategy on this map. It's big, a lot of metal. If you rush and your opponent blocks it and expands, they can have like 15 metal on you. Or 15 metal per second on you. It's not the smartest move. So, Randy double jacking, seeing what exactly Bloa is up to before going in and attacking them. Or deciding whether to attack or massively expand. What units to bring out. So far, though, Randy is just figuring, well, I'm the stronger player. I can just get away with building as much economy as I want to. Building all the economy. Okay, sorry. People who missed the Lobster series. This is a new tournament series being run by Crow, formerly known as Parzival, who is a... Apparently, who has been doing tournament organization for some other games and has decided to come back to Zero K and organize this, the Lobster Rolls series, a 10-week series that will be running weekly on Saturdays at this time, for which is nine, it's 17, or, bleh, 1900 hours UTC, so 7 p.m. UTC, 7 p.m. GMT, which is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, 11 p.m. Pacific, or 11 a.m. Pacific, which is where I'm at, and it is a 10 week series for people to play in tournaments. And I'm pretty sure there's some kind of scoring system or something that goes into the seeding or qualification or whatever for the final week's tournament, but that. I, that wasn't exactly clear. I, that's the best I know. I'm, I apologize that's not the clearest explanation, but honestly, I don't have the clearest details. Anyway, this is the first week of that. Oh, Dreg's pointing out in the Twitch chat that Randy is doing a special, I guess, hyper economy reclaim rush. Yeah, apparently they practice this. Uh, Dregs and Randy, that is, to practice this. So, Randy, gang, gunship plant. No builds so far. I'm curious what they'll go for, because if they practiced it, I expect it's not this... Not necessarily the simple locust rush, but a locust gnat rush would be my most likely guess. Ooh. Flea coming in here. The Clay's coming in to defend, but, yeah, unfortunately, Blow is probably distracted by other things. And loses a Conjurer for two Fleas. Uh, yeah, they're pff, five times cost. And Randy, not quite able to get the second one, but that uh, still did its job. And it is indeed a Locust Nat Rush. So I'll be seeing a few of these. And for reference, I do have a delay on the stream. I don't think Bloa is watching, but... Just for all you who were maybe concerned, there is a minute long delay in the stream, which should be enough for, yes, a minute, which should be enough for this strategy to be able to do what it needs to do before, it, you know, if it got spotted by stream sniping. Anyhow, with that said, Blow is actually managing to get quite a lot as far as metal economy. Little light on the energy. And they could really use Stardust's or Razors right now. They don't know it, but they could really use them. Picket won't be a bad idea, though. Lotus, Lotuses are going to just die. And there's the rush! Oh, very light. Three Bandit, three Nat. Sorry, not three Bandit. Blech. Three Locust, three Nat. Locust used to be called Banshee, hence my brain just totally throwing me off there. Three Locust, three Nat. Four Locust, one Nat. Oh, well, I mean, it's been revealed. But I think they're expecting Bloa is not going to be responding quickly to actually deal with this. And indeed, they're right. Bloa has just continued along with what they were doing. No particular change in defenses. Nothing really built to try to change that in terms of unit composition. Oh, they do have gremlins. My bad. They do have gremlins. They also have a reaver, which is a good choice in this con- Or can be a good choice in this context. Gremlins are the most straightforward option, though. That, that totally makes sense. Same time, though, Randy... Now that they've got the rush going, they are expanding like mad. They're nothing, letting nothing stop them. Being spiders, of course, it's easier to get around this map, too. 
Loa, however, only really having to worry about this one expansion. They've got plenty of time to build up anti-air, to build up some kind of defenses, deal with the rush. But unfortunately, the real problem isn't here yet. The real problem, again, is that Randy is using this as a cover to expand. And although Loa isn't too far behind in the economy yet, I mean, they're seeing what's coming from the next wave of this, and it is not pretty. And the gremlins are at least here. Actually, it has forced a retreat, so that's not the next wave. That was the first wave being pushed back and regrouping. Now, I don't disagree with the gremlins. I Oh, Thresher. How much does that cost? 450 You know, that's not a bad idea. Cost of two locusts, or locusts, but put in the right spot, which would have been back here, not in front here. But still, if it was put back here, that would be really efficient. Uh, that would that would shut down the entire rush, actually, and for the cost of two locusts. But I'm not quite sure if Blowin knows that this is meant to be a backyard rush. That's kind of the thing. It's... It's a bit of an issue. So... Yeah, with that, okay, the rush comes in here. There's no one stopping it. This is... This is honestly kind of sad. They're, they, Blow has nothing. They have no defenses. They have nothing that can really push against this. They do have some glaives coming along the side trying to do what they can to rip apart Randy's economy. But quite frankly, Randy is not even trying right now. Like, they, are, they aren't moving this around at all. They're getting caught up killing solar plants. Like, they were really trying. They would probably be moving around, like jumping from different sides. Trying to attack in advance of any anti-air deployment or defenses being built. But no, Randy is kind of playing with their food right now. I don't think Blow quite realizes just how bad of a situation they're in right now. Randy comes in here. All the gremlins able to hit. Does not care. Gremlins able to take care of actually quite a bit. Here are a couple gnats and locusts. That wasn't free from Randy, but they did manage to at least damage the lines. But now with the Thresher coming in, this rush can't really do much. Honestly, I'm surprised Randy is taking as long as they are. And now the Thresher in the main base, that's exactly where it needed to be. Good job, Bloa. I mean, it's a little bit tricky to push forward, because now, of course, there's been the ground switch, having led to the air defenses being constructed. Again, the, the best bet would have been one Thresher... I mean, honestly, the main base was a good choice, but... Maybe one Thresher right here? Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, the problem is that you have... Oops, the problem is that you have the... Where's Thresher? The problem is that Thresher is... Like, the range is pretty good, but this wouldn't cover it because, you know, the Locusts would end up attacking from around here. If you put it here, maybe? Like, this wouldn't be a bad spot, but it, basically you need one. Maybe two, and then that's it. Putting them at the front makes no sense. At any rate, blow it. Now just trying to defend against the ground forces coming in from all sides, but Randy is really not letting up. And of course, the Thresh is being only in one spot. I mean, like I said, that's the most efficient thing to do. It's just that they can only protect one thing. And really, the recluses are the major threat. That's it. So now, Randy tearing apart the last bits of Loa's economy while literally taking over their territory. I mean, that's, I get Loa's valiant effort to try to stay in this, but honestly, 70 metal to 22 metal is well past the point where you can't really come back. Especially against Randy. Like, if, it was, if the tables were turned, if Loa had 70 metal and Randy had 20, then that'd be a more even game. Like, Randy would probably still lose, but then again, if Blow got Randy to that point, that would say a lot for the skill level difference. But that's the thing is, well, Randy got Blow to that point, which says a lot about the skill level difference. And Blow are ready to throw in the towel. That is that. And Randy will be going on to play Google Frog while Dregs and Ted McFred play it out. I'm not sure if the Dregs and Ted McFred match has actually started. I think... I think it has, but I'm not sure.
Let's see. So if we go to this match here, what do we got? Okay, Dragons and Tapping Fred have been playing for a little bit. And Google Frog's back turning them. Google Frog will be playing as Randy, so I might as well just hop in and see what's going on. I apologize to anyone who's used to seeing maps and such below the... or in the little description bar at the bottom. I... I get that wrong too many times, honestly. It'd be kind of great if there was a way of setting up scoreboard assistant to do that automatically, but there isn't, so... or at least as far as I know, there isn't, so yeah, that's that. Lobster rule week one. 